Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today we're going to be discussing a really important secret benefit of a medicine that you all know that I, I love, okay? Cialis Viagra phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, guys. PDE5 inhibitors, okay? I've made over, if Callie put them up there, like three videos at least, and I've mentioned it in several others. There's the benefits that we can use for actual enlargement, and there's benefits that are actually for our overall health, and we're going to discuss that today. So one of the things that has been actually discussed and debated is whether or not actually drugs like Viagra can actually decrease your risk of Alzheimer's disease. What this paper looked at was specifically one of the largest cohorts. It looked at men that were older than 40 with no diagnosis of dementia that were started on erectile dysfunction medication and then it looked to see their risk of actually developing Alzheimer's disease. And you guys know that I always talk about like if you're not reading the introduction to the paper, you're missing a lot of information. But specifically, the way that this works is because phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. What you want is you want high levels of cyclic GMP, okay, or CGMP. What a phosphodiesterase does is it actually converts the cyclic GMP into 5 GMP, which is essentially the inactive form. So the more CGMP that you have, the actual higher your erection ability is going to be. I'll put up a little graph here where you can see that. You can see kind of the pathways of where exactly phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors work. But the reason why this is important is because the primary clinical effects of PDE5 inhibitors are a result of raised cyclic guanosine monophosphate CGMP, a secondary messenger that is degraded by the PDE. The relationship between the levels of CGMP and memory has been explored previously with studies showing low levels of CGMP in tandem with raised levels of PDE in the brain with people with Alzheimer's disease, okay? Phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors lead to increased CGMP, which is good for your mental function. Furthermore, PDE5 inhibitors have been proven to actually increase cerebral blood flow. And this can help with things like cognition and actually anti-inflammation. So with all that information, they built out this hypothesis that phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors are, are going to actually be good for minimizing dementia risk. What they saw in the study is there was over 270,000 men and over 1,000 of those men were actually diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease later on. But they found that you had a dramatically lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. Specifically in this study, they were looking at Viagra. I do think Cialis is superior. But they found that using PDE5 inhibitors reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease. And this was seen especially in the men that had greater than 20 prescriptions refilled. What that's implying is that the men that not only used the Viagra, but also used it regularly and regularly had refills, those were the men that had the lowest risk. Looking at some of the actual studies on the drug, they found that sildenafil Viagra can actually cross with something that's called the blood-brain barrier. Guys, it's, it is this barrier in your brain to keep toxins out. So even if if you have poison the rest of your body, it doesn't go to your brain. It's one of the reasons why things like chemotherapies don't actually work for things like brain metastases. So because drugs like Viagra can cross the blood-brain barrier, they can exert their inhibitory effect on the expressed phosphodiesterase in the brain cells, which can lead to some sort of neuroprotection. So in this study, we see that sildenafil, Viagra, I think it's fair to extrapolate to things like Vardenafil or Cialis, Tadalafil. All of these drugs actually have a neuroprotective effect. And there's an argument that can be made that it's going to reduce your risk of dementia and possibly increase your cognition, guys. So, you know, mic drop, you've already seen my other recommendations, but I still want to go over some of the other things that I absolutely love about PDE5 inhibitors and why typically I recommend them for most people. I'm going to get into who does not need a PDE5 inhibitor. So guys, I already made a paper on this like fibrosis risk and reducing it with PDE5 inhibitors, but it lowers fibrosis risk. Here's the paper right here. I don't hear it as much anymore, but people used to fight me on the merits of PDE5 inhibitors. In this study, they found that research on animal models suggests that the continuous and long-term administration of PDE5 inhibitors is not only safe, but also has anti-fibrotic properties. The end. Why does this matter? Well, guys, if you're doing PE and you're pulling on your PP, you're actually increasing your risk of fibrosis by causing chronic trauma to the tissue in that area. So taking something like like a chronic low dose or a long-term low dose PDE5 inhibitor can help to minimize that risk. Even with regular aging, guys, so listen to this, the loss of smooth muscle cells and changes in the nervous and arterial supply to the penile tissue is, is an important cause of penile fibrosis in elderly men. So treatments should be aimed at the upregulation of the nitric oxide CGMP pathway what a PDE5 inhibitor does, also what something like Vigor does. So you want to upregulate that in the corporal tissue. This can be achieved by long-term administration of PDE5 inhibitors, guys. So when people ask me, why do I take low-dose Cialis well, every other day? It's because I want to minimize my risk. Even if I was not doing PE enlargement, I would still be taking a low-dose of Cialis for the benefits.
The smooth muscle in the penis is what actually is responsible for most of the erectile function, more or less. Okay, guys, here's a paper here that shows that when you're using a PDE5 inhibitor, after an injury, you actually increase the amount of smooth muscle present. It's going to literally lead you to a better preservation of the functional tissue in the penis. For injury recovery, I've already talked about that before. I have so many guys and it's frustrating. They contact me on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Doc King. And they say, you know, hey, I I'm injured. I need help recovering. And I say, you need to start start Cialis or Viagra and they say, oh, whoa, whoa, well, I don't want to just put a Band-Aid and I have to explain, guys, it's not a Band-Aid. It's actually literally helping to increase blood flow to the area, which is going to help your tissue recovery. Here's an actual excerpt from a paper showing that when you start a PDE5 inhibitor within one month of an injury, it leads to better outcomes and better recovery of your actual erectile function long-term. So guys, what are some of the side effects? Well, we don't have any long-term data. And by that, I mean like 20 year data to show that if you take a PDE5 inhibitor daily, that it's going to actually be safe. However, all signs are pointing to the fact that not only is it safe, but it actually is going to improve your overall function long-term. So guys, here's data from a study looking at four years of Viagra risk, and it showed that there was only a 3.8% risk of side effects. And most of these things are things like flushing or headaches or lightheadedness, kind of very common side effects associated with these drugs. And guys, clearly I do my research, clearly I know what I'm talking about. If you want a step-by-step -step guide for how to do enlargement, how to do enlargement safely, and even instruction on how to dose things like PDE5 inhibitors, my course is available, guys. It's getting great reviews. I'm still impressed how well it's selling. If you want a step-by-step -step guide, guys, my information is free on my YouTube channel. But if you want it concise and to the point, it's available in my course. Check it out. So there is something else that you need to consider when taking a PDE5 inhibitor, and that's the use of alcohol. Here's a paper here showing that combining high doses of alcohol with PDE5 inhibitors actually leads to higher rates of potential side effects and even things like chest pain or angina because of the effect on your actual like cardiovascular blood flow. But what about chronic low dose use? Hink, what are you talking about? Well guys, here's a paper here that has shown that not only is chronic low doses of Cialis better than just taking a big pill, like a 20 milligram pill once a week, it also shows that and I can't, Callie, can you please put this in like bold letters and like italics and like sparks and lightning? Guys, this paper has shown that using chronic low doses of Cialis, Tadalafil, what, even once you stop, it's going to improve your erectile function after you stop. Because it's helping to maintain the integrity of your penile tissue, even after you stop, you're going to have better erectile function. So no, you are not going to get a physical dependency to Cialis, okay? Now, there's always the, oh, well, what about the, the psych dependency? And that is something to think about, guys. When you take something like Cialis, you're gonna get the best erections that you've ever had before in your life, outside of maybe when you were like 18 years old. That can be pretty addictive to, to see that. I, I would liken it to actually using some sort of performance enhancing drug, using steroids, okay? If you go and do run a course of steroids and you're lifting more weight than you ever have, your veins are popping, your muscles are bigger than they ever have, and then you come off of it, you're not physically addicted to the steroids, but you miss that feeling of being super physiologic, if you will. The same thing happens with Cialis, so you just need to be aware that once you come off of it, you're not gonna be getting potentially the same quality erections that you were while you were on it, but it's still gonna be better than your baseline. Hink, you're full of crap. Here's a Healthline article about the benefits of taking Viagra daily, and I'm gonna summarize these briefly. Yes, you can take it every day. Yes, it is going to improve penile blood flow, and that's gonna be particularly helpful with recovery, especially during nocturnal erections, where you have that those nocturnal erections bringing blood to the penis. It's going to help keep your penile function healthier at baseline. It can also prevent things like penile atrophy with age, meaning your dick literally shrinks with age because your erections aren't as good, especially at night from decreased testosterone levels. I've talked about that before. You actually have reductions in levels of erectile dysfunction, meaning, once again, it is actually improving your overall penile function, okay? It's not some Band-Aid, which really, obviously, you guys can probably tell, kind of pisses me off when people have such a rudimentary or fundamentally wrong understanding of that. And I'm not blaming people. So before some of you are in the comments, Hank, you really need to be easier on us. I don't blame you for not knowing that, but it's just, I've put this information out multiple times and now I'm saying it again, okay? I don't blame you for, for any kind of ignorance on lack. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm making this channel.
You have improved urination because the, some of the smooth muscle that's in your prostate, which actually constricts around your urethra, your PP tube, that relaxes so you can have better, better urine flow. It can help with symptoms of BPH, benign prostate hypertrophy. And this is a very interesting conclusion. And for this reason, Goldstein said, which is the doctor writing this article, one can argue that taking a PDE5 inhibitor daily has led to fewer strokes, fewer heart attacks, and better erections through endothelial function improvement, guys. Helping the actual vascular structures around your penis remain healthier, not only in your penis, but literally throughout all of your body. If you want to maximize your endothelial function, guys, Vigor, okay? It's available, it's on Amazon. It's an Amazon Choice product. It's, it's an amazing product that I specifically designed for primarily for endothelial function. It's also a great pre-workout. So what are my recommendations, guys? Well, first of all, if you are less than 30, I don't think you need to be on a PDE5 inhibitor. I think something like a good citrulline-based supplement like Vigor or something else is all that you're going to need, okay? If you are older than 30, and yes, 30 is an arbitrary number, guys. It's just that I don't like the idea of a bunch of like teens or maybe even 20-year-old guys that are potentially abusing Viagra because they start off with a low dose and like that, then go to higher and higher doses. So that's why I have kind of that arbitrary cutoff, but I don't have any specific data that I can point to that say, this is, this is the age that you need to start this. For me, what I do is 2.5 milligrams either daily or three days a week. And I combine that with literally vigor, okay? I take a scoop in the morning before my workout and then a scoop at night before bed because of that citrulline boosting the endothelial function, the nitric oxide, especially for nocturnal erections. And I usually do my PE in the morning as well. That's when I also go to the gym. So that's why I take a full scoop twice a day. And with that, especially with that 2.5 milligram, because the half-life for Cialis or Tadalafil is 18 hours, 17.5. I'm sure one of you guys was just ready to jump in the comments. Actually, he gets 17.5. But, so that means it's gonna stay in your system for long periods of time. Guys, you have to understand that something like citrulline works synergistically, works together with a Tadalafil to, to boost the function. So some of you guys might be very sensitive to it. You need to start at low doses, but that's what I would recommend. Guys, I may be a doctor, maybe, maybe not, but I am not your doctor. Talk to your doctor about any of this, okay? So to conclude, guys, talk to your doctor if you're interested in going on something like Cialis or Tadalafil. You have improved recovery from, honestly, B workouts. You have improved endothelial function. You have improved erection quality. You're gonna decrease your rates of erectile dysfunction long-term. You're gonna increase your ability to urinate. There's evidence that chronic smooth muscle dilation could potentially lead to increases in actual size of your member. That's extrapolating from aortic aneurysm data, okay? You're gonna have, once again, dramatic reductions in your risk of erectile dysfunction fibrosis and even literally reverse the signs of aging that naturally occur in your penis okay and now on top of that we have evidence that it can improve your cognition and decrease your risk of dementia like it, guys it is a wonder drug thanks for watching i hope you learned something if you did please leave a thumbs up thanks for watching if you made it this far especially peace and love guys and remember there's nothing wrong with self-improvement but you are enough just as you are peace guys